Hey, what's up, guys? All right, that's MJ. <laughs> Talking about Steel to Steel Productions. Anyway, guys, today we saw, you saw the, we, we did, and you did as well. You saw the title, you saw the thumbnail. Today we're going to be talking about Broly and Broly's freaking massive scar on his left breast. This guy has clearly been in some danger in his life. And whether or not this is going to be a major character plot point for him sometime during the film, I obviously brought with me MJ from MJTV to talk about this. Before we get started, man, why don't you say hello to everyone listening? Hello, everyone listening. Let's get into <laughs> this topic right now. So, anyway, the, okay, Toriyama has really reimagined Broly right here. He's made him more Yamcha-esque, which I think is probably a play on how many how much people actually hate Yamcha. But really, um, he looks similar to what he's always looked like, but there's just one discernible difference. He has this massive scar on his left breast, which is kind of like, okay, someone pierced this kid's heart. And I was thinking, and I'm sure a lot of people have as well, and that's why we're doing this video. Th this is him or Toriyama deciding that he's going to utilize the assassination attempt or something like it in this movie, and it's going to play a big part. And probably one of the reasons why either he's mad at whoever he's mad at or an uh, indication of how he's so strong and everyone knows he's so strong. So wh the, the question here is, where does this come up? Who does this to him? And what does this really tell us about his character? So, uh, MJ, before I get into this, I, I want to just say I think it's still going to be an assassination attempt. I don't think it's going to be King Vegeta. I don't even think it's going to be a Vegeta or a Saiyan at all. It's either going to be Frieza or it's going to be uh, Beerus because the, those two characters were actually on Planet Vegeta around the exact same time that Frieza blew up Planet Vegeta. I know Beerus has said that he made Frieza do it and he was probably asleep around that time. But the flashback we got in Dragon Ball Super and in the movie where Vegeta's looking at his father, bowing to Beerus, feeding him food and everything, had to be around the time that Frieza blows up that planet. And if Broly was still a kid, Vegeta's age, or maybe even Goku's age, you know, like a little small baby at the time that all this was happening, then someone much stronger than him that he shouldn't have survived at all trying to kill him, accidentally shooting him with a death beam or something, and somehow he survives, and that's one of the reasons why him and Paragus are off the planet, I think plays heavily into his character, and maybe even his motivation to go to where he's going to fight Goku, Vegeta, Beerus, and Weezer, whoever he's actually going to fight during this movie. So, what are your thoughts on that, man? Well, obviously, everyone that's watching this should know, but in Movie 8, which was the DBZ debut of Broly, they had that plot point of he had a power level of 10,000 <laughs> as a baby and King Vegeta decided, you know, that he, he's no use to us. Uh, he, he'll only grow stronger. We don't know how he'll act, how he'll use that power. Let me go ahead and take him out now. And that's what they tried to do. They tried to take him out and left him in the trash basically with his dad. <laughs> and there you go. So if they retell that, which is highly plausible, I think a lot of people you know are really uh, okay look yeah he looks different yeah he has the whole different armor yeah he has all these scars on his body especially the big scar on his chest however though Toriyama did say he was going to rearrange some things so I wouldn't be surprised if he's completely rebooted but I also wouldn't be surprised if some plot points are kept in for his character and obviously that would be the assassination attempt i think that was like a key thing of broly's character you know as far as when he was first introduced in the film and the flashback as a kid so if they try to do that this time do you think like do you think it makes sense for king vegeta to you say you don't want him to do it so are you thinking in this version, in this, I guess, reality of that story, that King Vegeta doesn't take him out for having a strong power level? Do you think he just kind of accepts it? Or do you think maybe like Frieza and Beerus get a hold of this knowledge before King Vegeta has even time to act on it? Like, what are your thoughts when it comes to that? Because that was a main thing in the film was that as soon as he was born, it seemed King Vegeta was... Uh, they, they let him know, you know, about how strong he was, you know. Mm -hmm. like, they were like, this is rare. This is weird, dog. 
<laughs> this it, ain't right. He, he, you know? he reacts so he reacts in the movie so rationally because Paragus is like, hey, you know, like, what if we could teach this kid to actually kill Frieza? And he's like, no, we can't risk that. It's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it makes no sense to me. But uh, no, in, 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 in real reality, it, it could be King Vegeta. And if it is, though, like, uh, the only thing I believe is if it is then it has to be Broly is not Goku's age. He has to be Vegeta's age. And they took him out after he displayed some form of power. He wasn't born with such potential where he's like, oh my gosh, this kid's only going to get stronger. 10,000 at birth? That's crazy. I'm not even 10,000. You know, whatever. He had to have shown some potential. And it has to completely loop back around to Vegeta. And another one of Vegeta's... See, uh, you know, seemingly, if that's the case, endless form of suppressed memories of like what what he remembers anyone doing or any strength possessed by anyone other than his father and everything he perceived in and of himself before Dragon Ball Super started because he didn't know who Beerus was even though he had some kind of re- suppressed memory of it and if Broly was the one who maybe hurt Vegeta maybe killed someone close to Vegeta if you want to introduce Tarbol and Tarbol died like what whatever it is you um right. you show this and it's like wow like we cannot deal with this kid he obviously has anger issues that are expressing themselves in really bad ways and we can't control it so so King Vegeta actually kills or tries to kill Broly, but that doesn't work. And him and Paragus get off the planet somehow. Maybe even uh, Frieza also knows about it, and he's been comforting this kid for like the longest time. Who knows? But 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 that that does that would mean a lot of retconning and a lot of over explanation as to how all this is possible and how they've been hidden for so long. But. Uh, it would give Broly a legitimate reason to want to fight Vegeta, and maybe even one of the reasons why he goes after Vegeta the very first time when Paragus sicks them or is sicks him on Goku and Vegeta because he has that association with Vegeta and King Vegeta. That would be interesting to me, uh, and one of the reasons why uh, Vegeta is probably his first target. So, no, I don't know. It, it could definitely be him, but I think. If the scar is going to be a main character trait, or uh, or not a trait, but uh, a visual uh, representation of him, his power, and what he went through in the past in order to connect it to whatever grudge he has against anyone in the future, or the present day when all the fights are going to be taking place, it, it has to have a connection to someone. So the only ones that actually make sense are... Vegeta, Beerus, or Frieza, because they were all on the planet at some point before Planet Vegeta actually explodes. So I think it would make it would be cooler if it's someone other than King Vegeta, because Frieza is definitely way stronger, and Beerus is way stronger. So if they showed us showed that to us, and the fact that he was able to survive it, it would be an automatic representation of just how BA and how ultimately. Uh, you know, power is maximum Broly we're going to get in this movie where he could take Beerus' shot, he could take Frieza's shot at a, as a child to the heart and actually survive, and that's why he's back and stronger than ever, and he's going to give all these people a really good fight. You know what I mean? No, I get you, and there's one thing that I feel like a lot of people, I'm not necessarily saying you, but I feel like a lot of people forget this, the Scouters. I think a lot of people forget exactly what those scouters can do. This is in both the beginning of Z. This is in Minus. This is also in the father of Goku. It's all there. They're communication devices. If you don't turn them <laughs> off, everybody can hear what's going on. That's specifically stated. It's like Bardock. Bardock is talking trash with one of his comrades. And he's like, yeah, turn that off. <laughs> They'll hear us. So it's like, <laughs> I'm just imagining as simple as this is. I mean, you can really make this simple. And it's an established technology device that we already know about it's like all you have to do is just have the doctors with their scouters on and just have them talking about how a baby was just born with 10,000 Zarbon hears it and Frieza yo a baby was just born he's stronger than King Vegeta <laughs> you know we gotta take care of this <laughs> you know and Frieza's just like yeah let's go take care of it so I think that's very simple that's an easy way to kind of bring Frieza into this you know, into the, the the story where he's the one who takes him out. And like I said earlier, maybe he does it really quickly. Him and Zarbondori go down there and handle business before King Vegeta can even, you know, act. 
like before he can even make a decision. And we've kind of seen that in DBZ Filler where Frieza will come out of nowhere and he'll tell, you know, King Vegeta three days now, you know, and then, okay. Right, <laughs> like, he doesn't have time to act because, like, Frieza's kind of ordering him around. You know, he's not even really the king. So it's like, I think that would be an interesting way to do that. I would like for it to be Beerus. I know the power skaters will get upset. I know even I would be a bit eh. But still, <laughs> I feel like if Beerus did it, that'd be a very symbolic way of introducing Broly to the story and kind of showing why he's so powerful. At least it would show just how crazy of a person he is for him to take a shot from the God Destruction as a kid and survive it, or even as a teenager and survive it. But here, if they do freeze, I think that would probably make the most sense. And I think plus it adds validity to why he kind of feared the Saiyans. You know what I mean? Like he kind of feared the idea that maybe somebody would show up super strong and you can kind of make that connection there. It could be a slight little retcon, but I don't think it's a retcon that really hurts the story too much. It would just mean... Okay, yeah, there was some idea to Frieza's, you know, fear here, and that's why he acted so quickly on Beerus's order. Because yeah, I'm not, I'm not dealing with these guys where they're popping out kids <laughs> at ten thousand, twenty thousand. Forget that, you know. So uh, I think that would make the most sense if it was Frieza. I don't think King Vegeta in this retelling should be the one to do it. Well, the one thing I would jump off with that is, like I said, yeah. King Vegeta, no. But Frieza and Beerus could actually have a connecting story. One of the things a lot of people are saying, and I know you don't like this, I don't really like this, and I know Danny definitely doesn't like this about Dragon Ball Minus, and a lot of people believe that Dragon Ball Minus is going to play some part in this movie because it's Toriyama's uh, adaptation or interpretation of what happened on planet uh, Vegeta before it yeah, exploded. Yeah, faithful day, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything, everything that happened there and the connections we've seen from the trailer. So... W- this idea that in Minus, Freeze is on his ship, and we hear him talk in the manga chapter about fearing Super Saiyans and now Super Saiyan gods and all this other stuff. What if we connect all that and we actually, if we're playing that whole chapter and that whole story into this story, Broly is the catalyst of everything that happens in Dragon Ball Super and thus uh, a way of reestablishing that everything that's happened over the last couple of years was set into motion by this character and his reintroduction really shakes up the status quo of the series the same way that Raditz showing up in Dragon Ball Z reestablished the status quo of Dragon Ball. It's, it's you know, this little kid who's Vegeta's age, right? So you have Broly showing up and he's fighting with Vegeta. Maybe Paragus is an elite soldier. Maybe even the right-hand man of King Vegeta. Their sons are kind of the same age. Vegeta has a repressed memories or whatever. But Broly ex- you know, shows a power level that is not typical of Saiyans. Maybe even some false Super Saiyan. If, if the trailer is anything to go off of, right? You have Broly has this weird Super Saiyan, non Super Saiyan form where he can take on Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan gods, and all these other forms that Goku yeah, Vegeta. Yeah, the black hair with the yellow eyes. Yeah, right? yeah. It's not a Super Saiyan, but it's something, it's something similar. And so, you know, obviously Vegeta has these repressed memories of Beerus being on the planet. He doesn't really know anything about it, but. Broly and Vegeta fight when they're younger. They're the same age. And Broly showcases this power. Of course, Beerus is already on the planet because he's observing or whatever. And this puts it in Beerus' mind that there's something out there about Saiyans. He doesn't like them. He thinks they're brutes. He still thinks that uh, Frieza should actually blow up the planet. So he tells Frieza to do that while he's still in the same vicinity. But he mentions to Frieza... That there is a Saiyan out there that he had to put down, or at least he thinks he put down, because he, there's this young boy expressing so much power that he's taking out Prince Vegeta, he's harming all the other Saiyans and everything, but this is a show for Beerus, so just a death beam real quick, and Beerus is just sitting there, like, legs crossed, you know, eating food, but he's just taken down, like, this little kid. Wouldn't that also go to tie into the flashback of King Vegeta like shivering. I mean, that would be a way of like, yeah, this dude just killed one of her own. Yeah, <laughs> King Vegeta like just shivering while Beerus is there eating food, right? Yeah, like yeah, he's he's taken out Broly. That's the scar. That's everything. He thinks he's killed Broly, but he sees the potential, and that's what brings up the whole Super Saiyan God thing. But he tells 
And after he, the Oracle Fish tells him about the Super Saiyan gods and all this other stuff, right? This is going to be the heir apparent to Beerus. It's going to be his best match in centuries. He goes on. He's like, well, you know what? Blow up Planet Vegeta. Like, I don't even want to deal with these. They're, they're, they're brutes, whatever. Uh, but I'll wake up in a couple years. And so he tells Frieza this. But he tells him about Super Saiyans, which Frieza probably already knows about. And also Super Saiyan gods. And that's how Dragon Ball Minus starts is Frieza on his ship and saying Super Saiyans and Super Saiyan gods. Like, he knows about it. And uh, and then he blows up the planet. And we get to right. all we get all the flashbacks with Bro- Bardock and Goku and Paragus and Broly and how they tie into all this. So Beerus has anger against Vegeta. He has anger against Frieza. He has anger against Beerus because of all these other things. And it ties into everything. And this is how all of this actually started. It wasn't... It wasn't Super Saiyans. It wasn't Frieza being uh, scared so much. It wasn't even uh, Beerus telling him to. It was Broly showing off this massive power that comes back later in the movie. No, oh, yeah, I would actually like that a lot because you're tying in a lot of stuff that doesn't really seem to make sense, you know, without using headcanon. And if they really do explain that, I think that would be pretty awesome. And I think it gives significance to Broly and why he exists. Obviously, we know why he exists. Money, <laughs> marketing, but you get my point. Like in universe, he shakes the status quo. And this kind of goes back to a video I did called Broly the God Slayer, which I think having him have like this hatred, not only just for like the Saiyans or like Vegeta and King Vegeta or even Frieza, I think having him have like this hatred toward Beerus or remembering what Beerus did and all this stuff, I think that just, it further implies why he's there and it just hammers down his uh, reasoning to exist in this new established order you know this is this is modern dragon ball bro it's like different than any dragon ball from before we have the, all these gods now all these god forms god key it would make sense to why he exists here and this is the reasoning for it all i think that would be really really freaking cool dude yeah no i i completely agree and just having broly have some motivation to actually fight Beerus instead of just Vegeta or Frieza or Goku or anything else like that. Right, right, it's just Goku. Yeah, (laughs) like anything. But just have Broly actually have the motivation himself and Paragus is going to be the person who shepherds him uh, from place to place or something when he's growing up and that's the flashbacks we see and the reintroduction of the Saiyans and maybe some mythology or history about the Saiyans that we haven't known before shake the status quo and actually have, as you already said, uh, Beerus and Broly actually have that t- uh, connection together and maybe even that ultimate destiny fighting together. We did a video for your channel that might be up by the time this one goes out that it, 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 it can uh, shake up the entire future of, future of Dragon Ball. And I think that this is something that actually needs to be part of it. It needs to have this ca- uh, catalyst, this, uh, you know, rivalry between Broly and Beerus in order to make it actually make sense and to tie it in with everything we've seen over the last five years for Dragon Ball. So yeah, I, I think that that would be kind of cool and also uh, an interesting character thing, a uh, character uh, ca- uh, characteristic for Broly, a uh, physical trait that establishes more about his backstory and his connection with every character involved from his past that brings him to that fateful moment and maybe you know like and everyone wants that 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 uh situation right everyone wants that shake up where Beerus is going to be at Vegeta's feet and and Vegeta's going to learn that Beerus was the one who blew up planet Vegeta because he told Frieza to right but what if you shake that what if it Paragus was off planet with Broly, maybe after Beerus act, attacks Broly. So he has this hatred, both of them, against Beerus. Planet Vegeta blows up. They know about Beerus. They know what his job is. So they hate him. Frieza recruits them off of that mentality. Like, this guy blew up your planet. They don't know any better. And, th- and then what happens when they learn? What happens when Beerus tells them? Like, it wasn't me. <laughs> like, I, I, I didn't blow up your planet. This guy did. Like, your your, your ruler did. What, what happens then? That explains why Beerus starts, or uh, Broly starts fighting Frieza, especially when all hell seems to be breaking loose in the trailer and everything going on right there. Like, that explains why Broly loses his mind and all this other stuff. Like, you know, everything he's been leading up towards, everything Paragus has taught him about 
his upbringing and the power and all this other stuff flipped on its head by something that's so ironic because it's something the audience has known for decades. So, mm-hmm. I, I, like, You're right. I, no, I, I, that could happen. It could not. But that would be really interesting in my opinion. No, I really do like that. And I'm pretty sure people are thinking, man, these two dudes talked about a scar for 20 minutes. But, hey, <laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do. But, I mean, yeah, I would love that so much. I think that would be a nice way to tie everything together and, Hey, maybe there is some legitimate, you know, legitimates to this because that's what they kind of want to do, right? They want to talk about the history of the Saiyans, the origin of the power, and they want to kind of make everything come together. And we're going to see, you know, the destiny of all these characters unfold, you know, Broly, Goku, Vegeta, Frieza, and possibly even Beerus, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, I completely agree. I can't wait to see the movie now, but they're probably not going to do this. I really hope they do, though, because I think it would be a nice little shakeup that a lot of people aren't expecting that would... It would it would really usurp my expectations if that's the way they end up playing the whole Beerus ordered the destruction of Planet Vegeta thing with something we already knew about and happened and another character being completely shocked by the revelation. But anyway, guys, I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Like MJ said, we've been talking about 20 minutes from for a scar, but... It, it, it's it's a it's a fun thing. I think it's going to be a major part part of his character. So I uh, hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Don't forget to go down to the description section below, hit that link, and go subscribe to MJ. Guy makes some really awesome Dragon Ball content. You're not going to want to miss any of that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload. Until next time, guys. It's been real.